Hello and welcome back. We are continuing our Great Shing run. This is a low infamy run, looking at mainly expanding the market. This is the current state of the market. Last episode, we did expand the market and uh, fight Russia and cut them down to size. Uh, this episode, we will be doing kind of two things. Uh, we will be trying to get the GDP up to 1 billion. Hopefully we can get in this episode. And I do want to try, uh, I've been having kind of thoughts dark thoughts about, uh, you know, maybe peasant levies is actually really good for stimulating the economy because of this minus military goods modifier. Now there's a ton of reasons why peasant levies suck, uh, but this might be enough to overcome it because it is effectively free money uh, because the purchase orders purchase at the increased cost. Uh, the purchase orders go through at the increased cost. It is just decreased cost for you as the player, so uh, it is a free stimulus or it is more stimulating than other injections into the money. Uh, and so this is what we'll be doing today. Uh, if you like the video, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I'm probably going to be putting, you know, that, you know, YouTube spiel uh, more in the front of the videos, or at least trying to, because I think it's more effective there. Uh, but also, if you don't like the video and you hate my face, what you can do is you can click the back button, and you can uh, click the triple dot uh, where you see the video, and then you say, don't recommend this channel, and then you'll never see me ever again. Uh, I re highly recommend doing this to curate your YouTube feed. If there is a particular person who you don't watch or you hate watch, uh, then maybe this is something you could do. Uh, but let's get on with the Victoria 3 here. Uh, we are also trying to pass proportional taxation so as far as uh, what how things go i think what we're going to do is we're going to go proportional taxation we also want parliamentary republic but i think we're going to try peasant levies first going back to peasant levies and then going to parliamentary republic uh that way you know um our people like us a little bit more our landowners are a little bit happier with us and uh they will be more amenable to this we will also be of course watching you see it off to this right. We have a whole bunch of bankrolls, a whole bunch of damage relations, improved relations, all this sort of thing. We're damaging relations with people who we uh, can potentially uh, puppet slash or who we can dominion later um, because they're already protectorates. And we are bankrolling a whole bunch of boyos. You can see all this is all of our bankrolls with the hopes of pulling them into our customs union. This is our current customs union with the hope of eventually protectorating them. Now we can't protectorate anyone right now because we're running negative influence. So we maybe want to declare a new rivalry probably with Russia because uh, can't say that they'll be liking us after this and so now we can just take a look at least at the protectorate thing and we can see that no one will accept actually Mexico will accept hiya now uh, for this we can give them an obligation I think oh if we call in the obligation well this is perfect this is why we're bankrolling them so we can use the obligation seems to be a little bit of lag all right uh, and we are going to confirm and we are going to get them as a protectorate now it's important to note once they are a protectorate they are going to have positive relations so we will have to damage relations and stop bankrolling uh, and the reason we're damaging relations is because we have to get them down below or into neutral uh, we get that one done. Scandinavia wants a defensive pack. No, thank you, my guy. Uh, but this will give them um, as a protector. We have to get it into neutral in order to dominion them. But for now, we're probably going to look for a little bit of a war. Probably annexing uh, some small power of some kind somewhere. All right, so probably wasn't watching this as close as uh, we should have been. We have an event here that is a tick for the revolution. And if we scroll down, we can see the revolution is at 92%. Um, and if we pick the one that will allow us to stay... Uh, on state religion or off of on separation of church and state uh we will change the progress and we will immediately pop this civil war if we hover the civil war i don't think this is one where we win because it is absolutely massive it's nearly the entire country uh even though we have larger share of the military jngz than anywhere else um i don't think this works uh and so we will have to choose between the other options that restore state religion uh which is a bit unfortunate we can either give interest group approval to the scholar officials whom we are actually going to use and gain two percent of pops loyalist in all of great shing that actually seems pretty nice or we could get five percent of pops in great shing now become loyalists we're at four million loyalists right now not a whole lot we will uh use this to decrease our la radicalism we get state religion it's not big nice but uh you know we can go back to here and we can put in you know the consumption taxes we had to nuke in the first place and uh this kind of helps out with the money quite a bit we do have to worry about this bureaucracy here thing here but this was should just get rid of this uh religious movement and so uh and of course mexico accepts the subjugation and so this is 
this might make other boyos pretty upset though. For example, the whole reason we did this in the first place was we wanted the trade unions happy with us because we really hate this malice. The man oh man does this malice suck. This malice is like, uh, there's the good suck and there's the bad suck and this is the bad suck. And so, uh, you know, this is kind of where we are now. Uh, but we're still just gonna, oh man, look how much money we're making now. Oh. Does this mean we just get to ramp up construction? I mean, maybe this is even good for us. State religion on... I mean, you don't need the pops anywhere near as badly on Great Shing. So, staying state religion actually is probably meta on Great Shing. I'm just so used to not sw swapping off of it. Um, but, um... Yeah, I mean, we have all these Nihilists that are super pissed. Actually, we have a Nihilist who's super pissed. Maybe we swap back at some point, but for now, we will be state religion. We do have to find this war, though. Uh, I'm guessing annexing Brunei might be the way to go. Uh, we do have a little bit of infamy uh, already, or we have quite a bit of infamy. Um, so we do want to, like, annex someone who's relatively small, and the main reason behind Brunei is, of course, uh, they have gold here. Uh... So we would get the gold mines as well as some other mining. And it's also not very far uh, in terms of, you know, uh, our supply network. Uh, and so it was minimal convoys to support this land over here. I mean, we could also go after Kokken, which is even fewer. Uh, but I think we're just going to go after Brunei largely because they have the gold. And it's only going to cost like one infamy. And this will reduce the number of guys on the map. So this will reduce the power ranking of nations or will help in that regard so we increase construction by about 500 points off the back of the increased consumption or consumption taxes really helping us ramp stuff out so we probably should have never gotten off state religion to begin with um i mean eventually we would want to pull migrants from like these indian countries but um okay the point is here now we are starting to finish the power plants so we are going to want to start turning up pms that are actually going to use the power plants the first one we're going to turn up is just this uh actually this is not the most efficient one to turn up first but i just really wanted to do it i don't even know why i wanted to do so bad i was just like it called to me uh the first and best one to turn up is the logging one so we're going to turn it up here and this is going to create a uh, demand for 1100 electricity now if we turn these all on at once generally it doesn't consume that much electricity but 2.5k is kind of a lot so we're going to see uh just kind of how much this can support here uh where we have 2.5k it's at like what is this 10 percent employment here and it's uh so yeah we can support 2.5k and so we're going to turn all of the logging up which will uh create an enormous amount of softwood so the softwood production is going to go from 40 to uh 100 this is one of the reasons this enormous amount of softwood you create relative to hardwood is one of the reasons why there's like hard hardwood shortages late game and we're also going to put all these on auto expand and i think we're going to put them all on rail car transportation because there is a lot of logging in areas of the world that doesn't have a lot of labor but this will cause all of these to get fully employed up um, you know electricity is very very expensive and then the price of electricity will come down and then we will be able to turn up more pms quite a bit more pms because it's only 2k and this 151 uh with just three of these employed uh because it has massive throughput by the way uh so 70 percent more engines and 70 percent more electricity wages stay the same here uh and we're getting it from encouraged manufacturing we can't find labor what do you mean we can't find labor we're playing china uh, but we're also going to, uh, you know, do some of this. And these we will have to swap over more piecemeal because you see it's 1.7k just for this one urban center. And sure, it may be the biggest urban center in the world, but we have a lot of urban centers. So, so we're going to need to swap these up piecemeal uh, to, you know, increase the amount of services. Because you see this now we have a shortage of electricity, which is going to drive up the price. This is going to be able to employ up and now there's no longer a shortage. Uh, so yeah, we are getting the electricity. But boom. Also, this war, of course, is going swimmingly. Uh, the Dutch East Indies decided they want a piece of the action, so we gave it to them. Siam is trying to sway us against Great Britain. Well, we're probably going to say yes. Uh, they they offer the war goal to conquer Kutai. Uh, we're actually super down with this. Uh, but what are, what is this play even? What do they want? We're super down on this, but what do they want? They want a Malaya treaty port? We, so the problem is we might not be able to stop them from enforcing, but we're super down for this. Now they're fearful. I think we mobilize all, and if, uh, you know, if they want to catch this heat, they can. One downside of us going to eventually, uh, 
Conscript's absolutely... I mean, there's a lot of downsides that we need to talk about, but if we go Peasant Levies, our Conscripts will suck really, really hard. So we do have to military spend a lot, so maybe it's not even, like, very good timing. Uh, but we'll even Conscript uh, up a little bit. Just a little bit. Just the tip. Uh, you know, just trying to make uh, the UK back down would be more than happy to have them back down. We have a 53 cocky versus, look at this, relative strength of mobilization... They're very pessimistic, and Conquer Kutai is a primary demand, and so this will allow us to remove one more country from the map, which is going to be b -b -b big nice. We do need more rubber, this is true. Uh, and we'll be enforcing relatively soon here. We almost full occupy, you know, uh, was this the, the Dutch East Indies as well here. And so we enforce on Brunei, we uh, annex them, we'll hit them with our buttons. Ba boom, ba boom. Uh, probably want to increase, uh, we're gonna put in the queue some government admins, we're just gonna look which place has the most tax problems, and then, uh, we're gonna increase them in areas that are not yet built to 51, and we'll solve the infra problems in a few places. Now, we do have more and more of this electricity coming in, so we will also need to, you know, stimulate demand for more electricity, which of course we're just gonna gum in, and we're going to turn the lights on. A third opinion. Alright, a lot of stuff going on right here. I think that more than happy to just kneecap the rural folk. They're quite strong. But we're going to come in, and we already have like 20% of the urban centers uh, just from our one place. Uh, but we're going to come in, and we're going to, you know, electric streetlights a lot of places that are, uh, in particular, pretty highly built out. Uh, and look to, you know, uh, increase the demand quite a bit for all of this. Oop, we clicked twice. And this sort of thing. Uh, and then we'll also get like a quad landing going on in Great Britain. So probably we're going to be saying goodbye to this, so maybe it's a good time to emphasize it, because uh, in 1.4 slash uh, 1.5 beta, I think they're going to be fixing the fact that you can multi-land. But you see here, one of our navies gets caught. Oh no, they have ironclads. Uh, one of our armies gets in. Oh no, they're defending with so many men. And then one is just getting in basically for free uh, against uh, their military because um, they can't reassign troops to a new thing. And so I think this is going to change in 1.5. But for now, the meta is to just quad land, and you will see we will get in even on Great Britain with just our few lowly, lowly boats. And then once we are in, we can just go, hey, you're a market liberal. We're going to promote you. Why can't we promote you? You're already a field marshal. Why do you have, like, no troops? Where are you from, my guy? You're from Manchuria? We should have conscripted in Manchuria. Uh, we will uh, actually activate some conscripts in Manchuria in order to just give him a little bit of uh, juice, this boyo, because this is the guy who lived. He's the boy who lived, he's the guy who got in. Uh, these other guys are not getting in. This guy is on defense. Maybe we just move him over to be on offense, but I think we just want to be able to, well, we could recruit a new general. Unlimited power, that sounds good, but I think steam turbine sounds better. Why don't we move this guy on over? But uh, we are, like, this is gonna go pretty poorly for them. Like, they might land Siam, but this is not the bee's knees, you know what I mean? Uh, and we do have a bunch of guys all over the place kind of doing things. We're getting rubber, you know, making moves. Speaking of making moves, let's see if we have any money moves available uh, to change to our customs union or pull people in our customs union. And we do. Uh, this guy will just take the classic accept. He left our customs union because uh, he was big bad. And they want us to owe them an obligation. Now, uh... Kalimanen is too small, really, to try and get diplomatically or through this, like, slower kind of uh, pressure. But uh, let's just check who we have obligations with. Ottomans, Afghanistan, all these. These guys are almost all defending the borders, so it's unlikely we can use them. Uh, yeah, we can't use an, uh, a thing in order to get uh, them as protectorates, but this is kind of uh, the naval the pattern. But you see, two of our naval invasions have failed, or you can't see it because it's behind my ugly mug. But uh, I assure you, two failed. But the one that gets in, uh, now we don't have a penalty. This guy's like cruising through. He's on offense, and we're just trying to get him to get him in before you know they have anything. And what we're gonna do is the guys who failed, we're just gonna move them on over casually as uh, could be, and we will you know be able to enforce on the UK. We'll probably reland behind. We probably need to add more construction, or actually we gotta fill out our queue. Yikes! Let's do that. So we pass proportional taxation, and uh, you know we're making a lot of money now, like a whole whole lot of money. Um, we could even think about lowering the taxes, but, uh, ain't nobody got time for that. 
Um, we also have enough, we also pump this up enough. Oh, not quite enough to increase an institution. Big sad. But what we're probably going to do is just add a whole bunch of construction. And we're going to add it at the back of the queue because uh, uh, I want to be able to plus shift and control. So the heuristic we're going to use is we're going to see where has the absolute most labor and um, labor available. And we are going to kind of pump all these up to a similar level. Uh, in order to do this, we are going to use the shift button, which adds five at a time, of course, because uh, we enjoy our sanity. We're going to avoid... Where's Gansu? Are we... Hmm, why can't we... Hmm. 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 Oh, there's Gansu. Okay. Uh, we're going to just get all these up to 15. So this will be quite a bunch. I think Lhasa is actually in uh, Africa. And we are would rather focus a little bit more back home here. And so we are going to do that. We are also going to come in. And I think we're going to build a tooling workshop. Uh, these are... What's their earnings? We're just looking at the earnings number. We're looking to see what looks pretty productive. Uh, and we're going to look to... I guess it's tools... Power? No. Steel? No. Looks like mainly tools. And so we're going to find one. We're going to look where there's a bunch of available la labor. Southern and Hui. And we are just going to slap down a 51 here at the back of the queue. And then at the front of the queue, we are going to add a whole bunch more infrastructure. Something like this. And we will be off and away uh, with hopefully a whole bunch more construction coming in in just a second. Because we do not want to be making money. We want to actually be losing money. Deficit spending. We're already up 100 million since the start of the episode. Which is really not that long ago. So things are pretty good for Craig up to one billion this episode yes of course our obligation to and from great shing is in fact expiring soon so we better make good use of it hmm little south america culture update it is increasingly getting painted han as all of our unemployed pops exodus out to south america we can click on a whole bunch of these or well we can exit this lens and then click on a whole bunch of these and look at the population and see that uh they are increasingly getting larger and larger han populations as they migrate out you know like even close to a million here you know what is this 152k you know, the the numbers are really big also something i wanted to note is we do have a whole bunch of these on auto expand and they are on auto expand if they're over level 50 that way each one of these is constructing like 150 percent of the building and then what we are doing manually is we are finding like the highest level of something that's not 51 and we're manually bringing it up to 51 i think this is a really efficient way to expand as far as the war the war is going pretty good um it is a little spooky though because uh i hate how this works so Siam is actually in charge of this war, so they get to negotiate the peace. And this part makes me nervous because there's like stuff in here like transfer Scotland, uh, which is, uh, you know, something. But I also really love the idea of uh, somehow them taking a treaty port off of the UK. Obviously, they're just returning a treaty port that was taken before or something like this. But uh, them taking a treaty port is uh, quite amusing. Also, we are just going for the cheeky... Uh, we get the low roll on rights of assembly. Uh, we just decided to go for rights of assembly because uh, we had a political movement for it. Uh, and we also wanted to get the trade unionists happy or less mad mainly less mad uh this this malice is so bad um and so uh we're just like kind of trying to cruise through something that we can try and pass quickly uh to make them happy uh and something like this i think we'll take that and so yeah perm wants to join the customs union fantastic we could also do a little bit of a check uh of course uh see if we can get anyone in our customs union it looks like spain is willing to just raw dog join so we'll click yeah you can join in uh if we owe them an obligation if we owe them an obligation we don't want to owe them an obligation we actually don't even want this guy in our customs union i don't think well maybe we just take him in the customs union but we're also going to check protectorates because this is part of the the slow expansion style uh getting perm in is really nice because we do want to slowly eventually get perm in uh we want these guys in too uh maybe we could just get the trade agreement with them Oh, we have an obligation, so we'll use the obligation to invite them to the customs union. And we're going to continue to bankroll them because we do want to make them into a protector. We get a native uprising? Come on, my guys. Crazy. So we will, uh... Where's the Fang front? I always forget where Fang is. Where are you, Fang? Is it in here? Rip to the dream. The native uprising is, like, the place where we have a problem... Yeah, rip the dream arena. Uh, but UK should be capitulating pretty soon here. So we have passed a critical threshold uh, when it comes to GDP at around 870 million is when you are no longer getting 
from the modifiers, from the positive modifiers, of which we're not even getting the industrialist being happy modifier, uh, juiced the IPT, and so you start caring less about, uh, in particular, uh, you know, having everything be capitalist owned a little bit. And so what we have set in is we have set in a few spots to auto expand on a variety of goods uh, that are owned by uh, the rural folk or by the aristocrats. Um, you know, by both, because we're on agrarian, and so we will. These will be auto expanding up, uh, in order to kind of ensure economies of scale. We see there's a ton of maize farms. Maize farms really suck, uh, and so we will probably try and find some places to build millet specifically, uh, a little bit aggressively. There, down in Africa, there are a few places that uh, build millet, uh, and this is much preferable to getting our grain from uh, the maize. And so this is kind of where we'll be going. So we're just kind of looking for a place that has. So this place, for example, doesn't have anything built out we're gonna put the wheat farm down we're gonna put it on auto expand and this place will get to specialize in wheat this place has to specialize in livestock because this is all it can build but we're gonna do these in a few places try not to do them in the Chinese mainland uh, because every time we build over a rice subsistence farm uh, it will nuke uh, 10k uh, jobs uh, and, and it will provide around 5k jobs as well like for uh, 4,500 I think when you uh, take into account of the fact that uh, or if you're building like millet, for example, because the harvesting tools does decrease jobs by 500, uh, something like this. And so we would prefer to build here in Africa where we do not have uh, all that going on. So we're just looking around. Uh, the millet here would be nice, uh, but we already have a few tea. Let's see, do we have anything here? No, so we're gonna build the millet and put it on auto expand. And we're gonna do this in a lot of places. Uh, here we'll just let the sugar auto expand because it's already starting to specialize in sugar. Here we'll let the livestock auto expand. Um, this sort of thing, like here, definitely let the millet auto expand. Now, there aren't enough laborers. Well, actually, maybe we should turn on Thresher there uh, just because there's not enough laborers there specifically. Uh, although we will probably accidentally turn that off eventually. We want this to be that and we'll put on rail transport, these sorts of things in order to uh, maximize. Did we already put this on? We must have already put these on auto expand in order to ensure this. Yeah, this must have been something that we did uh, before the the one episode, but we will uh, put that on auto expand. This is, yeah, we already were like, man, millet's way better than corn. Um, so uh, this is kind of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, so here, for example, we would want to specialize not in maize. Uh, so we could do this uh, as an example. And these things will build out and this will be good for us. Uh, especially because, you know, pump jacks might be looming on the horizon. Especially, oh, it is looming. It, pump jacks is not only looming, it's arrived. Uh, notably, we're spreading now. We added another 50 units. So now we're not spreading on average 200 tech. Our active tech research is half that at 109. Uh, you know, with 40% literacy, which isn't like high, but it's not like uh, in the dumps either. And so it's uh, really, really pulling a ton of weight to help us get caught up uh, with this level 200 uni. But this is how uh, we are continuing on. And we're just, uh, you know, cleaning up the war here. We won the war against Great Britain, but then we had a Bornean uprising here. And so we just have to put it down. We had an absolutely spectacular event here. Uh, the trade unions escalate their demands, and so now we get to give them interest group political strength and pop group approval, which is exactly what we want. That's kind of even why we're like doing what we're doing. And so uh, these guys will hopefully, yes, they drop the worst malice ever. Now we are getting the construction efficiency. Now the construction efficiency malice isn't as bad as it looks initially because you were getting a plus modifier from uh, you know all your construction centers, so it's not quite as bad as it looks but it is pretty bad and now that it's out we're big happy and also we're getting on to wealth voting and we just get electrical capacitors bink 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 uh the electrical pa capacitors is probably enough to move us over the 100 billion or move us over the 1 billion line so let's take a look uh, we will also pick a tech any tech uh combustion engine is okay but it's not necessarily very good we're gonna go electric railways i think it's not necessarily really good with our overall plan which is uh we're maybe going to try out, uh, what is it, the really the not so good law, the no good, not very good law of peasant levies, in which case uh, motorized uh, military is not, it's, it's irrelevant because you can't use it uh, if you're on peasant levies. Uh, and so, yeah, but we will be turning up uh, for what? 
uh, let's just first, we're going to see how much electricity we're producing. So we are producing uh, 12k electricity and we could have a total of 15k demand. So uh, we can go up to a total, without running a shortage, we can run up to 25k. So we can use about 10k, just a little bit shy of 10k electricity. So we got to keep that in mind. And so if we go electric sewing machines, how much electricity will this use? 4k, perfect. Not a big deal. Automatic power looms, how much will this use? Another 4k. So that's 8k. Uh, I think we'd rather turn on Brian Electrolysis, right? Which will use how much 2k and so we're just shy of being able to turn them all on we also needed to turn this on Oop, and i guess we wanted the electric street lights which will uh 12k that is not in the cards but now all these power plants will become much more profitable we actually want all these uh level 50 ones on auto expand and what we'll do here is we are also going to just slap down a whole bunch more so that we can use the other pms the labor saving pms much less important while we're here on china uh so let's find a place that has a lot of labor uh that is available that does does not yet have one of these. Hey Nan, we're already building something up to 51, so why don't we go find Shuzhou, and we're gonna just, uh, you know, slap down a level 50 on Shuzhou, and then we'll put it on auto expand, and then of course at the front of the queue, very important, we are gonna put a bunch of railways uh, so that this will be supported, which will increase our electricity output by, you know, roughly a quarter, not quite a quarter. We'll also uh, slap down, you know, another 40 or so here uh, and put a bunch at the front of the queue because this place is getting the uh, bonus uh, from the whatchamacallum, that's our favorite thing. Uh, it is getting the bonus from encouraging uh, manufacturers. So, uh, now let's just do that. Hell on earth, you're telling me. We're not going to slow down. We're not going to slow down for nothing, except we are going to slow down. Uh, well, the voting. Can we get past introduction? Of course not. That would be too. That would be too nice. I think we're going to take this minus ten percent bureaucracy. Uh, it is a little bit of a hit, but we were floating a lot of surplus, and we will just. Uh, you know, look to find where we have the biggest tax inefficiency. And so we solve the tax inefficiency when we build this stuff out. And so it's really not too big a deal. And so we're just kind of, why is it not cranking up? Why is this, why are we down cranking? Oh uh, yeah, there's the up crank. Cause uh, maybe it's cause the electricity was making them less efficient for a little bit because the electricity is so expensive. Let's take a look, like these should be way more efficient. Um, we have really cheap inputs on some of the things, but the electricity, yeah, is quite an expensive input, uh, which is vultures a car a, on a carcass. I think we're more than happy for the trade unions to cannibalize them. That's actually big nice. Uh, but this should be coming up. Come on. Electrical capacitors is so good. Why are you not popping up the GDP? Anyways, I guess it's going to be a little bit of a delay before we get to a billion. Uh, we might have to wait on... Oh yeah, there's the spike. There's the spike. Of course, the secession will uh, figure our pie. So we'll get to a billion soon here, though. This is actually pretty annoying because these guys literally just had a separatist movement and now they're having a separatist movement again, like not even like six months later. Uh, we have to up some construction with some stuff. We're just going to add some resources but and talk about like... This is, like, uh, just very annoying, uh, how this works, because I feel like you shouldn't be able to have, like, a secession that back-to-back, -back, uh, because we just put down the secession, we just, like, nuked it, and so why do we have this just immediately afterwards, immediately following, we just have another secession movement? It's like, the Shing Dream, you're telling me. Uh, anyways, uh, I, I think it's a little... I don't know. It's frustrating because uh, it's breaking our ability to start wars. I mean, we're still decaying some infamy. We definitely should have declared because uh, we weren't in a war. And so that was like a player error there because uh, we could have declared and then had this native uprising and then this type of thing. But also like the double native uprising just kind of being annoying. We have like all the academics here. We cannot get university repressed. So there's no proof of those allegations there. There's no proof. I'm not a crook. So, annoyingly, we're also going to be stalled out a little while longer because Scotland is having a revolution. But that's not what we're here about. We're here about watching it get up to 100 or 1 billion GDP. I almost said 110 million. Like 110 millions? Anyways. Um... I brain lag. Uh, we're about to get to 1 billion, so we might as well pause and watch the music. Oh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Watch it dip right as we, like... Ooh, baby! There's the 1 billion. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So in this Diplo play, France is trying to puppet uh, 
Orisa here, which is not what we want because we want to puppet slash Dominion Orisa eventually. And so I think what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, they're confident, so they're unlikely to back down. So we're just going to wait. But if it gets to like this level of escalation and we haven't received anything, do we owe an, owe an obligation? Yeah, our obligation to ourselves is almost expiring. We should do something about it. Uh, but as a, why is this spike sometimes? So sometimes port connections just spikes like in an insane way. And I don't know what causes it. Uh, this is not our normal port connections level. Uh, and so this is gonna wind down all of our trade routes and we are gonna like average GDP, but like, I don't know, I don't know what it is uh, that uh, that does this um, exactly. Uh, Cause this is not our normal port connections requirement. I don't know if it's our subject having issues. Uh, if all like all of our subjects simultaneously decide, uh, you know, that uh, Anchorage is the best thing ever. Maybe this is what causes it. Um, but here, we're just gonna unpause. Um, I'm not sure exactly what causes this, but this is just uh, the negative supply network strength, and you'll see it'll just widen down all of our trade routes, but this is not our normal level of poor connections. And so, um, I feel like I gotta look up uh, how to, what's going on about this. Okay, so we see that uh, they're not gonna sway us, it looks like, so we're just gonna join. Uh, and they want to transfer Baroda. Woo. Uh, which, of course, they could enforce on us, and so they... But they will have to land us first. Uh, but, of course, this will mean that we are even longer without uh, a thing. And so this is kind of annoying, but we will mobilize all the generals and activate some conscripts to hopefully just uh, scare them, and then we'll use the conscripts if we have to. Uh, not a ton of conscripts, just a little bit, and we will probably move some guys to some French fronts. Uh, that way, you know, we maybe get something done. Love the little guy. Little guy for a little front. And so, um, yeah, I guess we're gonna have a war with France here at the very end of this episode. So we unlock improved fertilizers here, which should make a pretty big difference because it's gonna make our Boom Booms places a lot more efficient, and also we are going to really depress the price of grain, uh, which is going to mean, and also these places are gonna become more profitable, but the depressed grain price will mean that there's significantly less demand for this stuff going up. I think maybe we also want to switch over some of these to vineyards. Forget which ones, I think grain makes more efficient vineyards in general. Uh, something like this, uh, but this will hugely bump us up um, and also uh, kind of shape the economy in a, in a good way. Uh, overall, uh, of course, uh, it's not necessarily something you want to rush, but we'll also do improved fertilizers here. Increases demand for iron, this sort of thing. Uh, we are winning this war pretty handedly. We were just on defend here, but eventually our allies just pushed through. Uh, and this is just to bleed out uh, them. Uh, we are currently on zero infamy, which is certainly not ideal. So we're gonna double check, uh, and we're this isn't full, so we'll we'll fill that out. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna double check if we can protectorate anyone, and this is perfect because we use the obligation, we get the protectorate, our truce is up with that guy, and the idea is we gain a little bit of infamy, not a whole lot, but it'll be a, a sizable chunk. I think it's gonna be the base value is like. I forget what the base value is. It's a lot less. Uh, I think the base value is five, but it's less because they're unrecognized. Yeah, so we get 3.5 infamy. So we will be decaying, and this guy will be a protector. So we want to stop bankrolling him and start damaging relations. We could take on his dead if we wanted. Uh, and here our quad landing comes in. So it's looking. Wow, is this really not going to work? The quad is not enough. I mean, they're losing this war anyways. But yeah, I guess we have to quint land this. Uh, because the quad, they have too many troops back home, and not enough infrastructure here in Normandy. Uh, combat width is based on infrastructure, and so the more infrastructure, the fewer landings you need to get in. But it looks like, looks like it's not going to be enough here. Whoop, rip the dream, rip the dream arena. Uh, I think in any case, um, we're just fine to continue this war. Uh, we can't just prematurely exit the war, because uh, they do have transfer uh, Baroda on us, and so we don't want to just capitulate. Um, this is not really an option for us. Uh, but, and we're not in charge of the war, uh, but I'm assuming that they are just going to eventually get enforced on here. Uh, you know, there's too much against them. Um, they would be fine with a white piece. We would be kind of fine with a white piece. Uh, we, well, we don't care about the war reps, so like this sort of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a fun episode. We got up to 1 billion. We actually got up to 1.1. Pretty big crank up. Uh, this is the way things are going. The economy or the auto queue is starting to slow down quite a bit as we expand construction. I think we are actually at... 
I, I forget what we were at at the start of this episode. We actually expanded construction a ton in this episode. Um, I guess I'll have to look back. I, we were either at like 4 or 5K or something like this, I think. And we're up to 7K. So we are big up. Um, a big part of that was uh, a tech that we didn't really talk about at all in this episode, but is quite a strong tech. Um, it's one of those techs that doesn't look very good, but it's actually quite strong. We actually got reinforced concrete, which just increases the throughput, uh, which increases the goods, uh, which makes all the goods industries more profitable and uh, goods required and also increases the output of construction so it greatly increases construction we're working on electric railways we're going ahead of time although it's not very ahead of time anymore we're not spreading so fast this like 200 200 tech like look we're not even not spreading military because we're oh no wait we are not spreading military yeah uh they have ironclads we're just not spreading floating harbor rip um and so maybe we could even add even more universities we're not spreading feminism now it looks like um and we're just mainly going to be going ahead of time on stuff i think after electric railways we will go malaria prevention something like this uh but uh i hope you enjoyed the episode if you did feel free to like to comment subscribe as i said at the beginning if you didn't you could, well, first of all, if you didn't and you watched all the way to the end here, you probably are um, not as aggressive as you should be in uh, clicking away from videos. But the second thing is you could do is you could click back uh, and uh, hit the triple dot and say, don't recommend this viewer. Anyways, other than that, have a good one.